These people are meaningless. They're cavemen without us. Here's your look at the Diamond Select Invincible Omni-Man Deluxe Action Figure. Mark Grayson is teenage superhero Invincible. He was a normal high school senior with a normal part-time job and otherwise normal life, except his father Nolan is the superhero Omni-Man, the most powerful superhero on the planet. At the age of 17, Mark begins to display superpowers which come from his father being a member of the Voltramite race, who, according to Nolan, pioneer the galaxy on a mission of benevolence and enlightenment. This collector's action figure of Omni-Man is based on his appearance in the Prime series Invincible. It features multiple points of articulation, interchangeable parts, and accessories. Figure, before we get things underway, let me send out a big intergalactic thank you once again to the folks over at Diamond Select. Not only did they provide this sample of the Invincible that we looked at in the earlier review, but they were also kind enough to send over the Omni-Man that we're having a look at in this review. Let's bring in the ruler, figure out how tall the figure stands, not to invade his personal space. We're going to just put it as close to his head as I can get it. I would say that the figure is seven and a half inches in height, but he's even a little bit taller than that. What would be taller than that? What, seven and five eighths? How exact are we going to go with these measurements? As exact as it's necessary. I'm going to go with, I'm going to stick with seven and a half for the time being and just tell you he's a little bit taller than that. The figure also translates centimeter wise to be about 19 and a half centimeters tall. Further invading the man's personal space, let's just move him over just a little bit and free up space next to him. We'll bring in the previously looked at Invincible. You know, Again, I want to draw the attention to the fact that Invincible's, well, Mark here, was really pale in his skin. And you see even more so when you have him compared next to Omni-Man. I don't know if that's the color that he's supposed to have been. And maybe there was some issue with uh, painting the figure at the factory. Because he clearly isn't supposed to be that pale of color. Maybe he is. Maybe that's what they intended to be. But when you really look at the two, I really wish that Mark could have had the color scheme, or at least the skin complexion, of Omni-Man. Omni-Man, I think, has the right colors there. For some strange reason, again, Mark's, Mark's color scheme is just a little too pale for my liking. Uh, proportionately, and again, when you look at the scale, Mark is going to be shorter than Omni-Man. That's the way it should be. I would even have said that Omni-Man could have just afforded being a little bit taller, but he's certainly a lot more muscular, a bit bigger of a bulkier figure than what we looked at earlier with Invincible here. Jumping now into the accessories that come included with Omni-Man. A lot of what you're going to see with this figure were things that also came included with Invincible, or slight variations. So, for example, he does come included with a catcher's mitt, he does come included with a baseball, but Omni-Man's does things, I think, a little bit better than what we got with Invincible. One variation he also gets is a different type of display stand, which you may see right now just to the left of the figure. I'm going to bring in the one that comes included with Invincible. I'm just going to move things over a little bit so you can see the difference between the two. Invincible, as you will see and probably remember, it did have the adjustable neck. So if you wanted to, you could have the figure in a regular standing pose, or you can also put him in a flight pose. The benefit of these type of display stands, being the fact that they have adjustable knuckles, is that you don't have to use the ones with the full length. If you wanted to, you can easily just detach and not use the parts that you didn't want to use, for example. You could easily just detach the end, for example, and just like I said, use a shorter post. It's one of the benefits of the stands. Downside is, though, is these stands sometimes over time develop real looseness. So you always have to go back in there and start tightening up the screws. But Omni-Man didn't come included with that display stand. And it's really strange why. The stand that he comes included with, first of all, is about two-thirds the size of the display stand that comes included with uh, with Invincible. As you can see there, right there. it's, a, it's a, also a smokier plastic. It's not quite the same clear plastic it came included with Mark. Now, his neck isn't adjustable. It's just a long post of plastic. It adjusts in the sense that you can still take the neck and then move it back and forth, but it's really super tight. And you've got to be careful as well, being that it's clear plastic, that it doesn't split on you by accident. Now, it attaches. There's the post on the back there. Pick the figure up. And you'll notice right away when you get Omni-Man that the plastic on the cape is very hard and rigid. It has very little give. Very, very little give. If you flip it up, though, there's the hole on the back of his torso. And then you just take the neck here and just plug it into the back here. Now, what it doesn't do is it doesn't serve as a flight stand. What it does do, though, is it serves as more of a museum stand if you want to have the figure standing. Depending on how you have that twisted, by the way, will dictate how well he stands on top of his display stand. 
You really don't even necessarily even need the neck anyways to plug onto the back of the figure's torso. You easily could just plug the figure's feet onto the post that's on the bottom and just use that instead. Um, I don't know why, again, they didn't use the same type of flight stand that came included with Invincible. Might have had maybe something to do with the fact that the figure's a little heavier because he does have the harder plastic in his cape. May have been one of the reasons why they just didn't decide to do that instead. And yeah, if you wanted to use this display stand, you can also easily just attach that to the back of Invincible. Let's just go ahead and grab the figure so you can see here. That plugs in the same way. You know, while looking at these two figures, although you can probably see like Invincible, his feet don't quite touch the ground. It seems like they almost started the wave, I feel, with Invincible and then made improvements by the time they got to Omni-Man. Because again, I feel like when we get to Omni-Man, and especially when we look at more of the accessories he comes included with and we sort of talk more about the figure, he feels like he's a more improved upon mold and a more improved upon construction than what we got originally with Mark. Anyways, though, let's take the figure and just move him to the side. The other accessories he comes included with, we'll talk a little bit about now, he comes with the catcher's mitt. It's the same type of catcher's mitt that came included as well with Invincible. We'll grab his right now, as you can see. His is, of course, a little bit smaller. But they work the same way. Instead of actually having the, the glove as be separate, as a separate item that goes over top of the glove or the hand, they actually sculpt the hand as part of the glove, which is so much smarter. I mean, it's so much easier than having to try to fit a glove over top of the existing hand. The figure also comes included with a baseball. Now, in the case of Omni-Man, though, they actually have sculpted the ball as part of his hand. So you can't remove the ball. Whereas when we looked at Invincible, I'm not even really sure. Oh, it's right over here. Invincibles, as you can see, comes included with almost what seems to be the same baseball, although it was separate. I'm not really sure why it had to be separate when, again, this seems the smarter route to go. Obviously, the ball's not going to go anywhere and you're not going to lose it. Again, I feel like Omni-Man makes better improvements than what we got with the original Invincible. Figure also comes included with a couple of flight hands. Simple flat plastic hands, doesn't have any additional paint, but the hands are sculpted nicely. You may see a little bit of additional plastic here on my fingers. Just the number of times I've already removed the hands from the sockets and replaced the hands, a little bit of additional paint is just flaked off. No harm, no foul. The figure also comes included with a bunch of mauling hands. I think for a character like Omni-Man, that's the route I'm going to be going, displaying him with the really aggressive looking hands. And again, they're all molded here in red plastic. The figure also comes included with a swappable head sculpt, which we'll go ahead and pick the figure up so you can see the difference between the two. This is, first of all, a neutral head sculpt that comes included with Omni-Man's stock out of the packaging, which for just by itself is a good looking head. I have no real issues with it. Paint's pretty nicely applied. And again, like the skin tone is so much nicer here in Omni-Man than when we got included with Invincible. In fact, actually, just before we change out the head sculpts, let's just bring back Invincible so you can see again. I gotta feel like, again, I hate to be beating a dead horse by talking about this, but I gotta feel like they may have made some paint error when it came to the skin tone of, of uh, Invincible here. Definitely make definitely bit better improvements when we looked at uh, Omni-Man here. Like, the coloring of his skin tone looks so much more natural in the way it looks like in the cartoon. I really wish maybe da down the road we could get a reissue of Invincible, and maybe they may be able to uh, fix the paint. So again, that was the only real issue I had with the figure. But again, that's the stock head sculpt for Omni-Man. The eyes are painted nicely as well. You can get the little reflection in the corner of his eyes. Nice, full-looking eyebrows, as well as the very long Tom Selleck type of mustache. This is his alternate head sculpt. It's entirely up to you which one you would rather go with. But for me, myself, I would rather display Omni-Man with the angry expression on his face. This one shows the visible teeth. Paint's a little messier on the mustached area. But other than that, like the head sculpt, I think this one is so much far superior than this one right here. Both are good, but I like this one a lot more. To change out the head sculpts, this is not something, unfortunately, I didn't do with the Invincible. I don't know why I didn't. Changing out the heads can be very difficult on these figures, and you'll see why in a second. Just hold on to the torso and just pull the head off the ball joint. It was a lot easier this time around. I've changed these heads out probably about 10 times now already. You'll see at the top here for the ball post, there's all these little additional uh, circle pieces that they've sculpted into the top. I don't know if they've done that to actually help assist get the new head sculpt in place. Because literally the first time you do this, you're burrowing the ball joint into that hole. You can see how it's sort of drilled in the grooves to allow that to fit over top of the head. It might also allow the head to stay better in place 
but it does mean a lot more force is required when you want to try to get the head back onto the neck. Again, I've done this, I don't know, 10 times or so, five to 10 times. And every single time I do it, I still feel like I'm having to apply a lot of pressure to change out the head sculpts. Now to help assist that, if you're having any difficulty doing this the first couple of times, you can easily just heat this up in hot water. Like put like the head in hot water, for example, soften up the plastic on the socket on the inside. That might help to put the head back in place when you're ready to change out the heads. Or you can also take a hairdryer, just take a few passes. That's apparently the sound of a hairdryer. But once the head is in place, make sure it's fully in place. That's what the alternate head sculpt looks like. Just in case you forgot what the other one looked like, there's the other one there. Yeah, I like the angrier looking Omni-Man myself. Certainly while we're sticking with this theme of angrier Omni-Man, let's go ahead and change the hands out as well. And just to change out the hands, you already know by now how easy it is to do this. Just wiggle the hands and pop them out of place. And we'll go ahead and just replace it with the more aggressive looking hands. There's the one. And there is the other one. Yeah. That looks, that looks so much cooler. That's going to be the way I'm going to display Omni-Man for myself, short of having just a whole bunch of blood splattered across his body. I don't think they would ever do a bloodied variant of Omni-Man. I would certainly be on board if they did. But yeah, I definitely like a more angrier looking Omni-Man myself. Once again, going back to the head sculpt, other than just a little bit of problems with paint for the mustache area, head sculpt is nicely painted. I have a few little scratches there on the side of the cheek, but nothing that's a deal breaker, certainly. Spin the figure around. You will see, yes, the coloring of the neck isn't quite the same coloring that they used for the face. It's pretty close. It's still not as pale as what we got with Invincible. I can certainly live with the color that they went with for the neck. It's not quite close. It's close. It's not that far off, really, when, you, when you're looking at it. Now, for the cape, what's interesting about the cape is that the cape is one piece. So when you look at the neck, the neck is a continuation for the back of the cape. So what they would have had to have done is put the cape on as a separate piece. It looks like it's clearly been painted, whereas like the O in the middle of Omni-Man, I can't tell whether that's been painted or if that's red plastic. If it is red plastic, then that, that means they would have had to go in here and paint the white areas of the costume around it. It seems like that's a lot more work. Judging by the fact that down below here, you can see there's a bit of red bleed, leads me to believe that this is probably the white plastic that they've used and they just painted the O over top of it. It's not a perfect white either. They've gone with a more off-white color. It's slightly more of a pearl color. It's got a little bit of, just a little bit of a lighter gray added in there. But it's definitely not a bright white like maybe we would have in the series. Again, we can talk a little bit about the cape. The cape is a very hard plastic. I don't mind the sculpt of the cape, but I kind of wish that the cape plastic material that they used was a little bit more softer and a little more forgiving. It's not the case where I always have to need to go in there and bend the cape on figures, but it's always nice to be able to have a softer cape to work with. And yes, yeah, they are definitely using more harder material when it comes to his cape, which again is going to add a little bit more weight when it comes to the figure trying to stand upright. Um, for the rest of the figure's body, the boots are pretty close in color to the rest of the costume, at least this part of the costume up the top here. Again, I like the white. Could have been a little bit more of a whiter of a white, yes. But I think it's a nice coloring that they went with. The red is nicely painted in there as well. At least for this costume, that really doesn't require a lot of additional paint color. So like, for example, when we're looking at his hands, clearly his hands are the red plastic. Clearly here, they've painted this in red. And the colors are pretty close. Pretty close. Uh, we can, of course, one last time, just flip the cape up so you can see the back detailing on the figure. A very simple yet effective looking costume on Omni-Man. Let's talk a little bit now about the figure's articulation. We'll start first with his head sculpt. I will say like Omni-Man has a better head articulation than when it came to uh, Invincible. Invincible was a little bit more limited, I noticed. But when it comes to Omni-Man, no, you can easily rotate his head all the way around. It looks up, it looks down, and it also looks back and forth. As for his arms, his arms do hinge out at a 90 degree angle bend. I do notice like this shoulder is a little tighter and it might be just a little bit of built up of paint that I've got in here. I might have to flake that just a little bit. Maybe take a, I don't know, like a little scraping tool and see if I can chip away at some of that paint. Because it's definitely causing the shoulder on this one side to be a little stiffer than this side here. But the arm does rotate all the way around. He does have a bicep swivel. Single again, hinge on the elbow. Hands rotate all the way around and you can also hinge them back and forth. Omni-Man also has the upper torso ball joint, similar to what we got with, with Invincible. The legs split the same way as well. You can get a full splits for Omni-Man. 
They go forward, they go back. About halfway up the thigh is a swivel cut. So you can rotate the leg all the way around. It has a single hinge on the knee. No articulation in the boot because, again, the boot is just painted into the lower part of the leg. But at least he does have foot articulation. You can move it up and down this way. He does also have a nice ankle pivot going this way as well. Yeah, liking Omni-Man quite a lot. I might even say Omni-Man is maybe one of my favorite figures I've picked up this year. And again, we can bring in Invincible. Let's just get him in a better pose than just having him standing there. There we go. Yeah, of the two figures, I think Omni-Man is a vast improvement over what we got with Invincible. Invincible was a good figure, and I, I still like the look of the character, but I think Omni-Man takes sort of what they were working with with Invincible. And I'd be curious to know really which figure they did first, because I really feel like looking at Invincible and then looking at Omni-Man, Omni-Man is a considerable improvement over the original Invincible. Maybe it was a case where they did work on Omni-Man second after Invincible. So again, they had the opportunity to go in there and make the improvements necessary to make Omni-Man of the two figures the better of the batch. Of the two, if you really wanted just to pick up one, I don't know why you would just want to pick up the one, I would definitely recommend getting Omni-Man. Uh, again, Invincible, great looking figure, but when you're looking at the two, Omni-Man is so much better. The more I think about it, the more I think looking at Invincible first was the better idea. Because had it been the other way around, and let's just say I looked at Omni-Man first, I gotta feel like I would have set the bar way too high for Invincible to be able to reach. I still like Mark, and I thought that Diamond Select did a great job on the figure, but yeah, there are issues. Of course, we talked about in his review, and we brought a little bit of that into the review of Omni-Man. Like, the skin tone is way too pale, at least I feel, on Invincible. Omni-Man doesn't have that problem at all. In fact, it's kind of strange that comparing the two figures, it's almost like the plastic is different also on Omni-Man. That it feels like it's a harder plastic, and it's almost more smoother and satin to the touch. Uh, also, like the skin tone, not only is better on Omni-Man, but like the paint that they also painted to his face feels richer, if that makes any sense at all. His accessories also, when comparing the two, while a lot of the things are similarly shared between the two figures, Omni-Man, for example, like the baseball, being something that's sculpted into his hand, I, I prefer more myself. I can understand why they had the ball as a separate accessory for Invincible, because then you could put it either into the catcher's mitt, or you can just have it as in attaching into his hand. But of course, that's going to be something that you're going to lose if you're not careful. I would much rather just have the baseball sculpted into the hand, and I'm glad to see that they did that with Omni-Man. Now, Omni-Man does have two swappable head sculpts, similar, like Invincible came with two swappable head sculpts, but changing out the heads on both the figures are difficult. They have textured the top of the ball joint. Again, I don't know the reasoning why they did that. Maybe it's just so that when you do attach the new head sculpt, it sort of helps to burrow a hole into the socket of the, of the head. And maybe that's one of the reasons why they texture it. It also could mean that the head is going to stay better in place and less likely to pop off. Uh, personally, for me, when it comes to displaying Omni-Man, I, I like displaying him more with the angrier head sculpt. But again, you have the option of both. I like the fact that Diamond Select threw in as many accessories as they did. Not only with Omni-Man that we looked at in this review, but in the previously looked at Invincible as well. Of the two figures though, which one do you guys prefer? The Invincible or the Omni-Man? And if you had picked up this figure for yourself, which way do you have Omni-Man displayed? Neutral expression face or angry, I'm just going to rip a team of superheroes apart with my bare hands. I prefer the latter. Also, big thank you to the folks over at Diamond Select that provided, again, the sample of Omni-Man and the sample of Invincible that we could have a look at in the last two reviews. What do you guys, again, think of the figures? Let me know down below in the comments section. And if you are new to this channel, you're enjoying the content that you're seeing, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below, turn on the bell notification, and make sure you're coming back to this channel because there are going to be a lot more Diamond Select reviews coming your way in the not-so-distant future. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.